Today, the title of this particular lesson is How to Keep Getting Up Regardless of what people say or do. I want you to know that life is intended to be a progressive thing. You're to keep getting up, meaning you're to keep going upward and onward and forward. You're to get better and better, richer and richer in every way. And I like that old cliche, every day and every way I'm getting better and better. Let me hear you say it. Every day and every way I'm getting richer and richer. And you see, you have to keep yourself in that rich consciousness, in that better and better consciousness. You have to keep getting up. I'm talking about, and this is why you have to hang around people who are of a progressive consciousness. And don't hang around with these preachers who tell you that, well, you know, it won't be long now. Just a few more days to stay here In this low and sinful state Just a little while to suffer Then we'll go sweeping through the pearly gates I'm not going through the pearly gates defeated Say with me how to keep getting up Say with me, I'm going to keep getting up. I'm going to keep getting up. I'm going to keep succeeding and exceeding. I'm going to keep succeeding and exceeding. The text is St. John, the 5th chapter, the 14th through the 15th verses. This is the third lesson in this series. The lesson started out with the first verse of the 5th chapter of St. John, where Jesus encountered and healed a lame man at the pool of Bethesda who had been in that case for 38 years. In the second lesson and last session, we dealt with the scriptures where after this man was healed, the religious authorities got on him. He had been laying around those preachers for 38 years, they couldn't help him, wouldn't help him, and didn't help him, and wouldn't have helped him if they could. And finally, when Jesus walked by and said, rise, reveal to him his power to rise. Rise, take up your bed and walk. Reveal to him his power to take authority over the thing that had him down. You see, in this case, esoterically, the bed is whatever you're down on, whatever's got you down. In other words, man, take up the bed, your bed and walk. The thing that got you down, grab a hold of it. It's been carrying you. It's been, it had a hold of you, now you get a hold of it. And go forward into life. But it happened to be a religious holiday. And the religious authorities had a lot of laws against what you could do on the Sabbath day. As a matter of fact, there were 613 different sub-laws interpreting the Ten Commandments. And it was almost impossible for any one person to remember them all, but the scribes and Pharisees had them all codified. They were in charge. And they didn't like the idea that some evangelist came through their town and had the nerve to heal somebody and bless somebody. And so they had an encounter with the man saying to him, by deduction, why didn't you stay down there on the bed where you were? Why didn't you stay down there like you should? Why didn't you stay sick? What did you get up for? And I told you last night in the lesson about the case. I've had many cases similar to this, but one most striking case was in Boston, Massachusetts. A lady had a baby born with a hole in his heart. And she belonged to a certain kind of church. I won't name the church. It starts with a P. 
ends with an L. But I wouldn't dare call the name of it. And so she brought the baby to my little old church down there in the south end of Boston. The church that had a nightclub in the basement. Right under us. A liquor store on both corners. And a sporting house next door. Anything you wanted, you could get on that corner. I was smack dab in the middle. <laughs> I've got so many things going. I remember one Saturday night, I was watching television with Mrs. Ike, who was not yet Mrs. Ike yet. <laughs> and on television flashed a scene of the church with police wagons <laughs> and cars out front loading people in to the police van. And she screams, she said, look, look, look. <laughs> the only sign on that building was the sign, Miracle Revival Center, <laughs> see Reverend Ike. <laughs> You know, all this stuff needs to go in that book, doesn't it, you know? <laughs> Man, the telephone started ringing around Boston. They got him! <laughs> Did you hear? Did you see? They got him! They got him! They got him! Oh, they got him! So I knew he was doing something. Young men like that come here riding in these long fancy cars and dressed like that. I knew he was doing something. I knew he was in something. They got him. I have some cousins in Boston and their phones rang off the hook. They called every jailhouse in Boston. <laughs> So they can come and get me out. Oh, yes, honey, they got him. I saw that with my own two eyes. On the 11 o'clock news, I saw it. Miracle Revival Center, C. Reverend Ike. Honey, they put him and all the rest of them in jail. Newspaper came out the next morning that police raids revival whoopee. <laughs> you see, I've been quite a character for a long time. That's right, I see Don here today. You remember that little place, don't you, Don? Because he was just a little fellow. He'd come there with his grandmother. They had a full-fledged nightclub, gambling club, and everything else club right in the basement. And the newspaper described all of that that was going, <laughs> going on down under there. And that just happened to be one Saturday night when we weren't having church. Otherwise, who knows, maybe they would have gotten him. <laughs> But thank God I was able to say, well, they raided the joint and took everybody down with me. <laughs> I was somewhere else watching television just as glad as I could be. <laughs> the next day, you couldn't hardly get in that block. For the church people. Oh, honey, I got to go and see this. <laughs> Took up a big offering that day. <laughs> I 
I am he that was dead. <laughs> but behold, I'm alive forevermore. How did I get off on that? Oh, yes. So that, was, that church had quite a reputation. I've always had a reputation. And you know, I enjoy that. I like being controversial. Even Jesus said, Woe be unto you when all men speak well of you. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I, I wouldn't be one of those boring, non-controversial preachers for anything. I mean, I couldn't stand it. That's how I got kicked out of the church. <laughs> when I went back to the home church where I first started preaching, I won't tell you what kind of church that was either, but it starts with a P, it ends with an L. And that was in the summer 1959. And there, you know, they had two joints on, on both sides of that church too. That's interesting, always around these joints. And that summer, I cleaned out the joints, closed them down. And the biggest thing going on in town. Had a baptism over at the, over at the creek where I used to fish. I had everybody down at the creek, including the high school band, playing Take Me to the Water. <laughs> Everything in that woods got so happy, I saw a snake crawl in the water. Yes, he wanted to be baptized. <laughs> Will I ever get to my message? But anyway, this lady finally decided she'd go down there to, to, to take the baby to that Reverend Ike, that she knew that she had no business going to that church. She knew she had no business messing with a preacher like that. My pastor done told me. <laughs> but she came and brought her baby, and we prayed for the baby, and she took the baby back to the doctor. They x-rayed the baby, and the hole in the heart was gone. She was one happy soul. She was so happy, she was shouting happy. And she was sitting in her church doing testimony meet and trying to hold it. She knew, she knew, you better not mention Reverend Ike's name in here, but she just wanted to give God praise. And she just quenched the spirit all she could. Oh, but she was so happy. Lord, God, heal my baby. Lord, have mercy. She just held it and held it and held it. After a while, ten megatons of Holy Ghost power hit her. <laughs> Hallelujah! Hallelujah! And she jumped up and blurted out, Oh, I want to thank God I took my baby to Reverend Ike. Reverend Ike prayed for my baby and God healed my baby's heart. <laughs> and the spirit left and she sat down. And the pastor got up. <laughs> said, Sister! God didn't heal your baby, the devil healed your baby. And every time I think about it, I pray for him to this day that God would give him repentance lest he sin against the Holy Spirit. So that was the problem that the man that Jesus healed had in the last lesson. The religious authorities were on him because the religious authorities, the political authorities, the so-called world powers don't want you to find out that you've got the power to rise. They don't want you to find out that you've got the power. The last thing, and I'm going to use a fundamentalistic term, the last thing that the devil wants you to find out is that you've got the power. Because if you find out that you've got the power, then he will have no more power over you. I'll use another fundamentalistic term too. He'll have to tuck his tail between his legs and go back to hell.
You see, anything, every time you find out, a man finds out that he's got all the power, then that takes the power away from everything else that deviled him. Now that has happened and we go to the last episode. And we begin reading St. John 5, 14, 15, repeat it after me, shout it back at me. Afterward, Afterward. after he was healed, after the religious leaders had gotten on his case, after the pastor had cross-examined him, after the bishop had excommunicated him, Jesus found him in the temple and said unto him, Behold, look, look ahead, you are made whole, sin no more. Lest a worse thing come unto thee. And the man departed. See, just like this woman at that little church in Boston. The man departed. And told the pastors and the bishops. It was Jesus. Which made him whole. I heard the choir singing, Oh, it was Jesus. Oh, it was Jesus. Everybody stand and sing it, and then I might let you sit down. I have touched the hem of his garment. Jesus. Oh, it was Jesus. Lift your hands and say, Oh, it was Jesus. In my soul, I have touched the hem of his mama. So the man went back and told the pastors and told the bishops. Yes. When you talked to me a while ago, I didn't even know who it was that healed me. Yes. I only know no. that I met a stranger. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. He looked differently from anybody that I'd ever seen. Yeah. I met somebody. somebody. He talked like Nobody I had ever heard talk before. But I really didn't know who he was. But after you got on my case, after you tried to buke me and scorn me, you criticized me from getting up yeah. when I had been down for so long. Yeah. I, decided, I decided I better go into the temple, into the temple. and have a talk with God yeah. Yeah. and find out who Ooh. And find out what kind of man is this that could get me up off of my bed 
when I couldn't walk for 38 years. What kind of man? What kind of man?